Hey, what's up everybody? It's Callan here from Start Your Systems and today I am doing a MX Simulator tutorial video on a uh, making a screenshot in game. Sometimes you guys will browse the forums and see there's a screenshots thread in the media room uh, and I know we get a lot of questions on how exactly to do that so I'm going to take you through some of the easy steps to get to where you want to be to be able to take a screenshot. Now the first screen I'm on here is my NVIDIA control panel. I have an NVIDIA GeForce 560 Ti graphics card. It's not the best whatsoever but you can still take good screenshots no matter how good or bad your graphics card is as long as your game can handle the um, a change in quality it's very tough to take screenshots when you're trying to like scoot across the track and you can't even move because the frame rate's so low so anyway here you are in your nvidia control panel and to get there i have this little icon down here on the right you can see it pops up and says nvidia geforce experience but if you click on it there is uh, geforce experience control panel updates all this stuff i haven't updated it because i haven't been home in a couple weeks but i will do that um, and then the main thing you want to focus on is manage 3D settings over here and then global settings. And I already went through and did it, but all this stuff up top is going to be the stuff that is going to make your uh, like graphics in-game much more like quality. Anti-aliasing in particular, you see all this anti-aliasing stuff. That basically takes away the rough edges you'll sometimes see on a rider when you do a screenshot. You'll see this like kind of pixelated rough edge. Anti-aliasing smooths that through, and you'll see what I'm talking about later. But again, you just want to make sure you got all the stuff um, as high as it'll go, 16 times, on, on, override, and then do 32 times, 8 times on all that stuff and that is more or less how you do manage 3d settings um, the next thing you want to make sure of when you're doing screenshots i think this is just applying yeah it's taking a second but the next thing you want to do is i've got my mx simulator icon down here you want to right click it and you see this whole thing comes up click on properties and there's a target line right here now if you guys have never used your target line before you may not know what this is or what this does uh, first off accurate skip one that I have right there you have to do dash dash accurate dash skip space one that makes it so when you're skipping forward in a demo it keeps a record of the timestamps and updates gates as they were actually being used sometimes when you skip forward it'll skip riders going through gates and then you'll have very different results it really helps out when you're doing protests which I don't do anymore but still a nice thing to have then the next important thing for screenshots dash dash hidden pause now I believe if you have dash dash hidden HUD it takes away the pause button but you'll notice when you hit the pause button in game there's usually a large pause that appears at the top of the screen that's one thing I've seen most people struggle with with screenshots is they'll leave the pause button on and then try to like blur it out it just don't even do that just dash dash hidden pause in the target line I think even in game now you can do something like forward slash hidden dash pause or something like that um, in the chat menu and I'll get rid of your pause you'll never have to worry about it again you know when the game's paused because nothing's moving so you don't need the pause logo it's not really a big deal but of course also you want dash dash hidden HUD that's not really super important because when you switch to free cam uh, you take pretty much all the HUD off anyway but if you're ever doing like a first person shot for whatever reason um, then dash dash hidden HUD will be your friend so I already have those in click away from that and we'll go in game and then I'll show you guys the next step alright so now we're in game and I still have Unidil in the background because I haven't been home like I said but first thing you want to notice is you'll go to graphics and sound setups now people tend to trip over this all the time they usually just click high detail or something like that um, the way I get the best quality with my screenshots is I go to advanced graphics setups and this is the settings that I run everything at 110 1024 resolution use ground map maps use compressed compressed textures this completely depends on the way your computer is set up I use shaders copy because that's the way that my graphics card renders everything smoothly it copies all the texture files so that it doesn't keep re-rendering them through but if you have a high quality computer some people use hardware direct stuff like that um, but this is what I use for shaders and then of course turn shader programs on uh, model geometric detail and texture detail up all the way I usually don't use roost when I'm doing screenshots and I'm not going to do it today because I'm doing a different type of screenshot because I want to show you guys how to manipulate tires in Photoshop and having roost on can kind of screw with that because then the roost looks like 
kind of shit. But also lens flares and reflections have that on. This is the highest pretty much that your game can run. And as long as you have a capable computer, you can usually run this by yourself no problem. Now the next thing you're going to do is go to new race and I'm going to do a little thing. Big thing right here, make sure record demo is on. You will not get a chance to go back and edit your stuff later if you don't have record demo. So I'm going to do Julian Lever's practice track, which we did for episode three of um, track walk. So you can go ahead and check that out if you want the track. I might link it in chat if I feel ambitious enough, but I'm going to go ahead and do a quick little spin around and I don't know, just maybe throw a whip or do something cool. And then I'll show you guys how to get to the record demos part of it where you can go ahead and go in and take your screenshot. All right, so here we are in game. And as you can see, uh, there's no HUD, and the game will also lag just a little bit. Um, that's literally just because, um, excuse me, that's literally just because my computer isn't the best, so you'll see a little bit of lag, but we're going to do a little bit of riding around here on Julian Lieber's track, and I'll get a screenshot, and then I can show you guys how to pretty much do everything from there. thinking about uh, using one of these corner jumps up here so let's go ahead and just ride this normally not used to playing I haven't played in two weeks all right so next thing you want to do pause the game uh, as you can see no hidden pause or anything like that so uh, if you plan on going back and taking screenshots at a later date, maybe a week from now, and you plan on playing the game from then, what you want to do next is to open up your chat menu. And the way to save a demo is forward slash name demo, and then a space, and then type in pretty much whatever you want after that. Um, we'll just go ahead and name this SYS screenshot, and hit enter, and then you'll see demo name updated, or you did one earlier. Um, but basically all this does is saves your demo for a later date. If you go back right now and hit playback race, which is all of your de uh, demos that you can look at, uh, you'll notice there is no SYS screenshot in here. Uh, that's basically because the only way you can reopen a demo that you've saved is by exiting and then coming back in. And so that's how you do that. All right, Whoa. so now I've exited out and I've come back in and you can see here we are. SYS screenshot, SYS screenshot tutorial. We'll go to SYS screenshot. And because I had to exit out a game, it'll take it just about the same amount of time to load track and load bike. So we will wait for Julian Lieber's track to load here. Lovely shot of Unadilla that I took in the background. All right. So here we are. I just switched to free cam now. That's free cam. So you're sitting in first person, hit tab once, it goes to follow cam, and then hit tab again. Now you're in free cam. Now you can move around wherever you want, do whatever you want. You don't have to follow the rider. You can just pretty much go wherever you want, look around, whatever. So that's how free cam works. We'll just do this for a second so I can find the spot that I want to look into the demo here. Nice whip, but I was going to use one of these up here. Let's see. Uh, what about right there? So, now we're back in free cam. And we'll scoot over the Lieber practice trek. Over to here. And there I am jumping. Now, the next very, very, very important piece of all this is you can see it looks really stupid right now like I look completely distorted it makes no sense people miss this all the time go to graphics and sound setup lower your field of view down to at least like 40 or below like let's let's here let's do 30 and then you'll escape back and look now you're not as distorted you can scoot back there's the rider and it's much easier to get a better shot because it looks a little bit more realistic. So let's go like right about right here. Or how about... Alright, uh, nah. 
I'm more content with the undersided shot. That way I can easily show you guys what I'm doing with the uh, with the wheels. All right, get that bush out of the way. All right, so here's a good screenshot, I think, right here. And so the next thing you want to do is hit your screenshot button. Mine is S, and the way you know you hit the screenshot button, you open chat. It says saved screenshot, and I've deleted all my screenshots recently, so it's screenshot 012. You can exit out of that. And then this part is very important, and I'll show you why later. Skip back a frame or two so that your rider is not in the shot anymore, and make sure when you do that, you haven't moved the camera at all, and nothing in the background is a sequence file or something that would have moved during that. And you hit S again, check the chat line. Again, we have another new screenshot. And now you've taken your two screenshots that you need to get that one screenshot. So I'll exit out of the game and show you guys how to do work in Photoshop. All right, so now you've got your Photoshop open. You can see we've got Photoshop up here on the screen. And I'll just, yeah, so here we go. Photoshop open. I have Photoshop CS5. And then the next thing that you want to do, you don't want to open any new files. Don't hit file or anything. But you can see here I've got my personal folder open. And here's my two screenshots right up here at the top. If you remember, the second screenshot was technically like the ambience or background picture. So we're going to drop the second screenshot in first, and that'll open up. Then we'll pop this open again and drop the second screenshot on top of that. Hit enter, make sure that it's in there, and then we're going to rasterize both of these layers on the right side. So convert that to smart object and rasterize. So we have two rasterized layers here on our layers palette on the right side. <clears throat> Next thing you want to make sure of, you have black and white situated right here. And then go back over to your layers. Make sure you have the top layer selected. And then hit difference. And you'll see it turns into this weird kind of ambient looking shot of some sort. And you can see just lightly there in the background, there's some cloud cover. You can kind of see a little bit. We want to fix that. Whoops. I want to click that. So we're going to move this until you can't see that anymore there we go looks like the cloud cover is gone so we got the rider in a negative scale the cloud cover back in the background gone and we're on difference in layers on the top layer next thing you want to do go to select and then go to color range and then you'll see it'll turn this into this black and white photo that's why black and white over here is important have your fuzziness all the way down and it'll just have selection ready and hit OK so it'll select around the rider and everything else and all, and you can do one of two things I do them pretty much both to make sure that there's nothing left on the screen but first I backspace so that it gets rid of all that blackness in the background and then I hit the erase tool and up this erase tool as high as it'll go pretty much and erase this back here you could kind of see that it was erasing even more stuff so there's like a little bit of residue usually left over in my screenshots but I'm not erasing anything else. I'm not erasing the rider or anything like that. I'm just erasing that kind of like skewed black background. Next thing we're going to do is deselect. On a Windows computer, you just hit Control D. It deselects. Now you have your rider separated from the background. And you go back over here. Make sure that you put this back on normal so you have the rider separated. And you have your rider and your background layer separated. So now what you want to do, and this screenshot works out nicely, is uh, you want to blur the background because the background is farther away and you want to get that nice depth of field look that you can't get because the game doesn't have interactive depth of field. So we're going to select it on the background here. And what you want to do is go up to Filter and you have your Blur menu. And usually I do Gaussian Blur, but you can do like regular Blur, Box Blur. Um, if you're want the rider to look like he's moving fast you could do motion blur and make it even with the rider and then do it like really crazy and it looks like he's moving through the sky but because the clouds are so far away motion blur doesn't really work here so i usually just go ahead and use gaussian blur and get it enough that the clouds are blurry but not too blurry so that the rider is sharp and the clouds are still noticeably clouds and there you have it. So the background's blurred now. You have a nice looking depth of field. And you have the rider separated. 
And the next thing I am going to do is show you guys how to get the wheels to uh, appear to be moving as if, you know, they're, I mean, they were moving, but right here we have a freeze frame. I don't usually do this. Some people do this. I rarely do this because a realistic look of a, of a picture, the wheels aren't, aren't moving unless you're doing a little bit longer exposure and a long panning shot and you have the rider going through screen you have the rider focused the background blurred the wheels would be moving then but again we're not doing a mo motion blur shot so this doesn't make much sense to the shot but I'll still do it anyway so you guys can understand exactly what I'm doing what I'm gonna do here is select the pen tool and have the rider selected we're gonna zoom in you can see a little bit clearer the rider now and then we're just going to start drawing around the tire here. And you want to try to do the best you can to not get too much of the frame or the chain involved. So once you're through there, you can pretty much just kind of willy-nilly it. But we're drawing lines around the tire. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And then you're back to the swing arm. So we're going to work our way down the swing arm. And you want to make sure to get the not get the things that you know are not in motion like this disc guard is not in motion but the disc is so you wrap around the disc guard and continue to work around it's like a shark fin you back to the swing arm work down around the end of the swing arm and then back up and then you have the brake caliper here so you try to draw around the brake caliper and down then along this wire here you have to make a lot of points but once you get to the end you'll see all the lines will disappear and you'll be left with this line more or less it's a complete line right click it and then hit make selection just feather radius doesn't matter hold it there you don't want to do anything else. You don't want to create a new layer. You don't want to do anything. You want to just have this screen like this. The tire is selected. And the next thing you do is go to filter blur. And then you do radial blur. And radial blur creates a circle look to it. So when you hit radial blur and hit OK, it creates a tire. Now in motion, we can hit deselect, back out, and that tire is now moving. Again, it doesn't look like completely perfect. You got a little bit of the chain in there, a little bit the, of the frame, you know, this and that. But it does look a little bit nice. It's kind of a different flair to it. You've got the disc brake moving and all that stuff. But, of course, you have the front tire as well. So we'll go ahead and do the front tire. And, again, it's the same thing. I got the pen tool selected here. We'll start up here. And just work around the tire. Try not to get too much of the fork involved. And then you can pretty much just go willy-nilly. If it's too hard for you with the background off, you can always go over to your second layer, turn the background off. I actually kind of like the background. It makes it a little bit easier to see the tire here. But sometimes it doesn't, so background off isn't always the worst idea. So we've made it back to the fork. So we're going to work our way down the fork guard. Pretty much can draw a straight line from here, so that's fine. There is a whole shot device up there, but that's all right. It doesn't really need to be bothered. Working our way around the bottom. There's a guide right here that wraps around the back of the fork. So we're trying to not get the things that are not actually in motion while you're jumping involved here. So we're wrapping around the back of the fork guard, up the side of the fork seal, and complete the loop. Again, same thing, make selection no feather radius and then filter and we'll do a little bit less of a uh, radial blur this time since it's the front wheel and the front wheel may not be moving as fast because the rear tire is the one that has the power going to it so let's do like maybe a seven and it looks a little bit different because your radial blur isn't perfectly centered but it still does have a nice look deselect and back out and now you have two tires that are in motion the rider separated from the background and the rider in the air so now you pretty much have a nice looking completed basic screenshot but most people like to go through and do color correction and i'll show you guys now how exactly i do color correction there's many ways to do it um, a lot of people like to do uh, layer masks and that's a great thing to do too i'm not saying that's a bad thing but i like to just basically change the layer itself 
So what you do is you go have the image or have this uh, layer selected, your screenshot 12 layer. And then I go to adjustments and then start off with brightness contract, contrast. Turn the brightness up a little bit because he's a shaded rider. And then a, a little bit more contrast so that you get a little bit more of those popping colors. Then I'll also do exposure and just a little bit on the offset on the wrong side so that you get a little bit more of the pop out of the colors. And lastly, vibrance. I want the rider to be a little bit more vibrant. And if you want more saturation, that's fine. But you can see it kind of makes it look like crap sometimes. And less saturation makes a black and white rider. So I don't usually do too much with the saturation. In fact, I'm going to leave it pretty much stock. But now you have a rider that pops at you a little bit more. And then I go ahead and do the background. Pretty much use the same tools. And turn brightness down just a little bit. Contrast up a little bit. And go to adjustments. And actually I'll just do vibrance, no more exposure. Turn the vibrance down just a smidge. And there. Now we have, again, another well-looking, pretty much completed screenshot. But I take it one step further. I go over here on the right, double-click both layers, and merge them. And then go back to your image. And what I do is hit levels here because you can see there's a lot of unused data. And you can kind of play with this how you want. But if you just take all this away and take some of this away, you can see that it's changing the screenshot a lot. I'm only going to take a little bit of this and a little bit less of this away. But it does make the rider pop a little bit more. Maybe gives it a little bit more of a realistic feel. There's nothing wrong with way out here, but you do want a little bit of a brighter screenshot as well. I'm actually not going to do that much at the front. Uh, let's do like seven. And then lastly, go through, make any minute changes that you want. I always go in here and add a little bit of, I believe it's offset. Just a smidge though. Just to give it that little kind of camera-ish feel. And then always go through, maybe check one more time. Some brightness contrast. If you want a little brighter maybe. A little bit more contrast, maybe a little less contrast. And voila, you pretty much have a finished screenshot here that's in one layer. You can always go back and change things as you went through. That's why people tend to use uh, masks because then it's easier to get a little bit cleaner image with being able to go back and fix the things that you didn't like. But that is essentially a screenshot tutorial in a nutshell. And of course, the last thing you want to do, go ahead, save as. I usually save as a PNG so that you get the best quality out of it and we'll just save it as sys.png on my desktop save and it's going to take a second to load and there we go so now if i go to my desktop here it is open it up and make it full screen that's not what i wanted to do full screen and that is the completed screenshot there's a little bit of you know pixelation in here that's okay you still have a pretty nice looking screenshot and in the end I think it turned out pretty good I definitely have had better work in the past but just a rough idea of how to do screenshots in game and how to make them look the way that you want to again I would recommend getting a little bit more used to Photoshop before jumping in and doing just my straight tips I don't know everything about Photoshop I know a good amount but there's definitely a lot more to learn and a lot more to understand about getting a cleaner and crisper shot out of a Photoshop image with your in-game screenshots. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Let us know. And uh, we should be doing uh, more non-in-gamey stuff coming up soon now that the Nationals are over. But again, hope you guys enjoyed this. Kellen Brower, you've been watching Start Your Systems, and we'll talk to you guys soon. What's up, guys? It's Kellen and Jeremy from Start Your Systems, and we're doing an MXS tutorial cornering in Supercross today. First look, we're going to do 